There is a new report coming out that the Broncos have reached out to Jim Harbaugh. So we're going to talk about that on today's show. Plus, the biggest names so far in the mix appear to be Harbaugh now and Sean Payton. So if you had to pick between one of these two coaches, who would you pick? I don't think it's really a bad choice, but I am curious to know between Harbaugh and Payton, which one would you rather have? Light up the comment section and let me know. Could Jim Harbaugh be on his way to Mile High? We're going to be talking about that on today's show. Plus, at the end, we're going to touch on the Broncos-Chiefs game. I got some takeaways and some extra thoughts stemming from that loss. But the latest rumors are that the Broncos have reached out to Jim Harbaugh for the open head coaching job. So this was first reported by Pro Football Talk. Mike Florio reporting that Denver did indeed do their homework and give Harbaugh a call. Probably not a great time following his early exit from the college football playoff. A definite surprising loss, although I did think TCU would give him a good run for their money. Now, Harbaugh did interview for the NFL last year, right? The Minnesota Vikings were very close. In fact, some reported that the job was already a done deal. Ultimately, Minnesota probably happy that they waited out for Kevin O'Connell after the Super Bowl. They're a former Rams OC. And Harbaugh said after that, he's done with the NFL. You're done with the whatever you're done with the NFL, you're done with whatever insert, you know, blank until you're not, right? Until someone offers you a lot of money and then you might change your mind. Now, I don't know if Miss Michigan losing in the college football playoff is good or bad for the Broncos, right? I would think on one hand if the Wolverines were to win the national championship, maybe Harbaugh decides I've won the Natty, now I want to go win the Super Bowl. On the other hand, Back-to-back first-round exit or first-round uh, semifinal exits in the CFP might ha- might have Harbaugh thinking, "Am I hitting my ceiling a little bit? And maybe I should go back to the NFL." Here's what Mike Florio said exactly. By the way, per a source with knowledge of the situation, the Denver Broncos have reached out to Harbaugh to inform him that they have interest in talking to him about the vacancy that emerged six days ago with the firing of first-year coach Nathaniel Hackett. I also want to tie this into Sean Payton. So Benjamin Albright, who is very well on the uh, on the beat of the upcoming head coaching job for Denver, saying any team wanting to acquire Sean Payton is expected to have to trade a first rounder to the Saints. So we talked about this on the last couple of shows here on the channel of will the Saints go the Bruce Arians route where they just trade their coach away for a bag of peanuts and just kind of do him a solid? Or will they go the John Gruden route, the Bill Belichick route of, nope, we want a lot of picks. And it appears they are looking for a first-round pick. We'll talk more about Sean Payton in a little bit. But first, let's get back to Harbaugh. So under Jim Harbaugh uh, with the 49ers, they were great, right? Came in, took over a team that was 6-10 and 10 in their previous season. And what does he have him do in year one? 13-3 and three and gets all the way to the NFC Championship game. 2012, it's the Harbaugh Bowl. He loses to his brother John in the Super Bowl. 2013, he's right back in the NFC Championship game. So immediate success and very good success too. In just four years with the Niners, he went 44-19-1. and Now, Harbaugh at Michigan, you can look at it as, is he sort of hitting his ceiling, right? I'm sure he wants to win a national championship, but he has definitely had a lot of success there. Has he beaten Ohio State? Yep. You can check that box twice. He did it back-to-back years. Did he make the college football playoff? Yep, check that box. He did it twice. Is he getting paid? Yeah, $8 million is not not a lot of money. Okay, I'm sure we'd all be happy making $8 million. But $8 million compared to $25 million? Well, he might think, you know what? For an extra $15 million, I might reconsider returning to the NFL. The highest-paid NFL coaches look like this. Sean McVay is making in the neighborhood of 15 to 18 million. Bill Belichick's right afterwards at 12 and a half, Pete Carroll at 11. I wouldn't be shocked if the richest owners in the NFL, the Saudis of the Rockies go, we want Jim Harbaugh. We're not taking no for an answer. We are going to make you the highest paid coach in NFL history between 25 to 30 million. Why? Because we've already spent so much on Russell Wilson and we're not just going to let that money go down the toilet by getting a unknown first-time head coach. No, we want a proven commodity. 
And Jim Harbaugh going to the NFC Championship game in three out of his four seasons in the NFL, you know what you're getting, and that is an excellent head coach. So Harbaugh is going to say, show me the money, and the Walton Penner ownership group, not a problem. They have more money than the second, third, and fourth owners, like richest owners in the NFL combined. Let that really sink in. I'm not saying they're going to just throw around money because it's, you know, like it's nothing. No, you don't get rich by just letting other people spend your money uh, in poor ways. But by all means, I do expect them to make Harbaugh, Payton, whoever they get, the highest paid coach in NFL history. Now, if you want Jim Harbaugh to be coming to the Denver Broncos, hit that big red button and subscribe. I'm not going to say if you sub, he's going to come for sure, but we don't have any room to make an error for, right? This has to be a home run hire. They have to get this right. I don't think they're going to go the first time uh, head coaching route with an up and coming OC. No. So if you want to see Harbaugh come to the Broncos, subscribe to the channel today. Another worth thing noting here, another thing worth noting is that Harbaugh already kind of has a connection to the Broncos, right? Condoleezza Rice, a part-time owner of the team, was at Stanford when Harbaugh was the head coach of the Cardinal with Andrew Luck. And you might see Condoleezza Rice go, you know what, I think I've got Jimmy's phone number. Let me give him a call. We had a great relationship when he was in Palo Alto. Let's get him back uh, over towards the West Coast, and let's get him in the Rockies. So Ian Rappaport and Tom Pelissero wrote about this, saying, Condoleezza Rice, a member of the Broncos ownership group and search committee, has deep ties to Stanford University, where Harbaugh coached before his first NFL stint. Harbaugh's full focus has been on the Wolverines championship push. Now that it's over after Michigan's loss to TCU, his interest in the NFL, if any, should become apparent quickly. Let's turn our attention over to Sean Payton here. So I, I do believe the Broncos are going to make a very real push to get uh, Jim Harbaugh. I would love to see Jim Harbaugh be the coach of this team next year. I don't think I really have to expand on that. I know that going away from the NFL for, what, eight, nine seasons now in Ann Arbor can be a tough readjustment coming back. But who are we kidding here? Would you rather have Jim Harbaugh or the Lions OC Ben Johnson? With all due offense, Ben Johnson, I'm going to take Jim Harbaugh. Before we talk about Sean Payton in more detail, though, today's show has an awesome deal thanks to our friends over at Fanatics, where you can get this pretty dope uh, Broncos beanie on sale right now. It's after the holiday season, pretty much, but the sale's still going on. So get it today, chatsports.com slash D-E-N beanie. I've got that link for you all in the comments and the description of today's show. Let's get on to Sean Payton here. So Sean Payton's career with the New Orleans Saints is a very good career. I'm just going to let you guys look at the records of each season he was down in the Big Easy. Most recently, right after, before 2021, 12 wins, 13 wins, 13 wins, 11 wins. Now that 2018 season, that's when they got robbed in the NFC Championship game against the Saints. But then there's that bad stretch of three years of seven and nine. Now, there was one season when Harbaugh was, excuse me, when Sean Payton was not at the at the helm after the whole Bounty Gate scandal. But go back even further, 2013, 11 and five, 2012, seven and nine. That was the season without Sean Payton there in 2012. 2011, 13 and three, 2010, 11 and five, and of course the 2009 Super Bowl. You can look at this one of two ways, right? Sean Payton is an awesome head coach. I, that's not wrong. But there are some underwhelming elements of it, Wait, right, right? Of the seven and nine seasons where you go, Sean Payton had Drew Brees for all that time and they only won one Super Bowl. Like, that's a little bit of a, you know, nitpicking criticism right there. But I do think it's somewhat fair to go, does Sean Payton underachieve with the Saints having Drew Brees, a top three quarterback, top five quarterback of all time and only getting to the Super Bowl once? Yeah, that's probably a, a fair assessment to make. But make no mistake, Sean Payton is still a fantastic coach. And I would love to have Sean Payton as well. When it comes to these two guys here, I'm kind of going either way. I, I, I think you're nitpicking. We're talking about two of the best coaches in football. So the margin for separating the two of them is really thin here. Overall, I think I'm leaning Harbaugh over Sean Payton right now. But I... They're both 59 years old, so I, age is a non-factor when you try to make a pros and cons list for the two of them. And Sean Payton, Harbaugh, both great coaches. I'm going to lean Harbaugh just because 
He was only in the NFL for four years, and he went to the NFC Championship game three of those four years, and he had Colin Kaepernick, which, no, no, I mean, no disrespect to Colin Kaepernick, he's not Drew Brees. Yeah. Uh, now, moving on here, let's talk about Broncos Chiefs Week 17. Um, not the result we, of course, are looking for. It's 15 straight losses to Kansas City. But I think we can all agree that this team played much better in this game compared to most of their games all season. I'm going to argue they played better in this game than any of their four wins. Why? Because he traded for Russell Wilson to beat the Chiefs, and he got you within three points of beating Kansas City. And this might be a Kansas City Chiefs team that goes on to win the Super Bowl this year. Now, under Jerry Rossberg, there were some changes. There were some notable differences. One, Montreal Washington, inactive. That's kind of a F you to George Payton. That's his rookie fifth-round draft pick who's supposed to change special teams. Never really got that special teams boost. In fact, the Broncos special teams unit was dead last in the NFL. That's why Rossberg went out and fired Dwayne Stukes in his first day of business. The offensive line, which was getting some uh, feedback, some criticism, if you will, for not being there for Russell Wilson after getting sacked. I saw a notable change there. And I thought play calling, right? Not Clint Kubiak. He was down on the sideline with Russell Wilson. It was the OC, Justin Uten, who was up in the box making the play calling for the Broncos. 24 points, over 300 yards in his first time. Pretty solid. I think that's really good right there. So overall, I thought Jerry Rosberg did a really good job in his first time coaching in the NFL as a head coach. So I want to ask this question to you guys to kind of wrap up the show. Should he come back next season? I, I think with the way, they might go 0-2, but they're also playing the Chiefs and the Chargers. We're talking about two teams that very well may up and end up in the AFC Championship game this season. So should there be a path for, whether it's head coach or special teams coordinator or some kind of consultant or advisor, would you like to see Roseburg come back ne Rosberg come back next year? I personally am all for it. I think what he's done in a very short time span since being stated as the interim head coach, I mean, he has shown why they should have made this decision weeks ago. Why? Because he could have won some extra games. They could have beaten some of these lesser opponents like the Titans or something a few weeks ago. Instead, you clowned around with Hackett, and it goes to show, yeah, this team probably could have been managed a whole lot better and leaned into their strength a whole lot more under Roseburg compared to Hackett. All right, that's going to do it for us on today's show. I appreciate everyone for tuning in, making us a part of your day. We'll keep you guys up to date on the latest Broncos news and rumors.